Hi there, and welcome to this brief SketchUp tutorial. For those that were at the Garden Designers Introduction to SketchUp course the other week, they'll recall that I um, said I'd get one or two quick tutorial movies online just to recap on some of the things we covered and um, perhaps provide an introduction to some aspects of SketchUp um, that unfortunately those that weren't able to attend missed. And um, hopefully thereby they'll be able to do, be able to catch up. So I'm going to quickly draw, in a minute, I'm going to draw um, the Christmas tree which we covered at the end of the session. We kind of rattled through it quite quickly and I know not everybody um, got the tree completed so hopefully that will be useful. But before we do that, for those that weren't at the session, you'll notice we've got a tool palette here open and that's kind of the full set of tools. It duplicates quite a few of the ones that open up here as standard but I think for now we'll stick with this full tool set which if you've not got open you can open through view tool palettes and here you see the large tool set you tick it it's already ticked on mine because it's open but if you tick that um, the tool set will open the other thing I've got open that you won't have and, and don't need it's just really there um, to help me with the movie there's some scenes I've got set up just to um, guide me through the making of the of the movie in the various stages so you won't have those I say and you don't need to worry about those so we're going to crack on now and we're going to draw the Christmas tree that we um, say that we've briefly covered at the end of the that first session. So we're going to click the circle tool and we're going to come down onto the drawing surface. I'm going to go to the origin there, we're going to click and I'm going to move that circle, pull that circle out along that red axis and we're just going to click anywhere. You see it's got a dimension of 243, 2431 millimeters. Uh, we want that to be something more like 250 millimeters to give us a 500 uh, millimeter diameter pot. So I'm going to type in 250 now and I'm going to hit the return and that shrinks down. I'm just going to scroll in, I'm going to zoom in a little bit using the scroll wheel on top of the mouse and that's going to take me in so I can see what's going on a little bit better. We're now going to give that circle some height and start to make it look like a pot. So we're going to use the push pull tool here, we click on it and we go down to the surface of the circle and you can see it's got this little dotted pattern on it. So I'm going to click on it now and I'm just going to push that up I'm going to make that 450 high. So this time I'm going to actually type in the dimension first. I'm going to type in 450. I'm going to hit return and there it is. I'm just going to have a look at the top of that. So I'm going to use this orbit tool and I'm just going to click on the screen, hold the left button down and I'm going to drag it down and then I'm going to release when I'm happy with what I can see. I'm now going to try and flare the top of this pot out a little bit. So I'm going to do that using the move tool. So I'm going to click on the move tool there. I'm going to come down onto the top circle. As you can see, it's gone blue. Now, I don't want it to be blue on the perimeter. I'm going to gradually move my mouse and the cursor around until I've just got um, a little green handle highlighted there and the blue's gone and it did say end point. There you go, it says end point again. I'm going to click and hold that with the left mouse button and then I'm going to pull it out. I'm just going to release that anyway, and obviously that's a very flared pot. I don't want quite that flared, so I'm going to type in 50 and press return, and there you go, it's given me a slightly flared pot. I'm now going to give the create the rim of the pot, so I'm going to pick that push pull tool again. I'm going to come down, I'm going to go down to the top surface, and I'm going to click on it. Now I can take that up, but what I want to do is I want to actually want to duplicate the surface, so I'm going to press Alt this time. And there you go. And now, um, when I create it, it's going to leave that original surface underneath, and then create this second surface on top. I think on the on the Windows, for those not using a Mac on the Windows, it's going to be the Control button that will um, give you that plus arrow. So I'm going to drag that up, and this time I'm going to type 50. So I've created a 50 mil high rim. I'm then going to go to my pointer selector tool. I'm going to click on the top surface, and I'm going to backspace. I think it's delete on the PC and that's going to lose the um, kind of that top surface to the pot so now I've got a very thin rim and I've got some soil and I've got this pot shape so what I'm doing now is I'm going to group this so first off I need to I'm going to select one item, select that top surface and I'm going to right click my mouse and you'll see it comes up with this option to select and I'm going to select all connected and now I want to make this into a group Normally I'd use um, the group shortcut on the Mac, which would be Apple G, um, Command G. But as I know, some of them, are, some people are using the um, the Windows, and that the shortcuts aren't set up there. 
we're going to use the um, the menu to do that. So this time we're going to go edit, and we're going to select make group. So now we've made that into a, a single item, which we can edit. If we double click on it, we open it, and then we we can edit the individual pieces. But we're going to move on now by drawing the trunk, and um, so we're going to select the circle. And we're going to go to the this lower circle on the part. We're just going to hover over that, and then we're going to go in. And now, because we've hovered over the outer that outer perimeter, it's given us the, the center as a, a click option. So we click on that, and we're going to drag this circle out, and we're going to make this 75. So I'm going to type in 75, which would give me a 150 or 6 inch diameter trunk. And there we've created the circle. Now, as before, we're going to go to the push pull tool. We're going to hover over it, it's gone slightly dotted, you can see there, I click on it, and I'm going to go up, push that surface up, and this time I'm going to just type in 200 to make it 200 high, and I'm going to press return. I'm going to hit the select tool, I'm going to click that top surface, again I'm going to right click on the mouse, and I'm going to select all connected, again I'm going to group it, so I'm going to go edit, make group, so now I've made a group of the trunk. I'm going to click off. And now we're going to make the actual cone of the tree itself. So I'm going to select the circle tool again. I'm going to hover on the outside of the trunk just for a second or two. And then I'm going to go into the center. And it will allow me to select the center of the trunk. I'm going to click on it. And I'm going to move the cursor out again. Following the red axis, doesn't really matter where you go. It's in that plane. And I'm going to select... I'm going to do a 1.5 meter base to the to the cone or to the Christmas tree. So I'm going to type in 750 millimeters for the radius. I'm going to hit return. Right, so that's going to be the start of my cone from the tree. Um, again, I'm going to scroll out and zoom out using the scroll wheel on the um, on the mouse. I'm just going to pan slightly just to change the position on the screen. So I'm going to hit the hand tool. I'm just going to drag it down. I'm going to go back up, I'm going to hit the point tool, and then I'm going to hit the push pull. So now I'm going to push pull, so I'm going to select that, and I'm going to push it up, and I'm going to make it 1.8 meters high, so that's 1800 millimeters. Type in the 1800, hit return. And now I've got this cone, which will become a Christmas tree in a minute. So again, this time we, we hit the plus, uh, the move tool, sorry, we go to the perimeter and we move around until we lose the blue highlight on the circumference and we've just got endpoint showing and then we can just click that endpoint with the left click on the mouse and then we can drag it in and we can take it to a point when we've got it to a point we left click and there we go we've created it so we can um, scroll out a bit using the zoom out using the scroll wheel on the mouse use the orbit tool just to lift the view up a bit and there you go you can see we've created a tree a tree shape very simple one but sufficient I think for, for what we need um, now we're going to put some colour into the um, tree, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the paint pot and I'm going to click on the brick symbol here um, to pull up the texture palette. We'll click on that and what do we get? We've got a whole load of textures here, so we're going to go into vegetation, um, loads up one or two and we can play with these but I think for now I'm going to select this one and I'm going to go over to the tree and I'm going to drop it on the tree. So there you go, we've put a kind of vegetative texture onto that tree. I'm, um, then I'm going to do the pot, so I'm going to click again on that tab. I'm going to select colours this time. I'm going to go to the colours and you can play with the colours and the textures you want. So sorry, click on the colours and I'm going to find a red colour. So you can do that directly from that as I've just done it there or you can select on some of the other palettes um, to play with what you want. So you could do it this way. A kind of ready colour there, play with it a bit, get a slightly darker one, and then I'm going to click that down onto the pot, and again I'm going to go to the colour, so I'm thinking, right, now what do I want to do? I'm after a browny colour, so what have we got in here? That's quite dark, that's greens, that's kind of a browny colour, so we'll select that one, and we'll just we'll scroll in, we'll zoom in, so we'll scroll, zoom in using the mouse scroll wheel. And we'll just drop that onto the tree. We scroll, zoom out, 
you can see there we've created our Christmas tree. So, I think as we did at the end of the session, people have a go at decorating that, and by all means send me your images. It'd be great to see them. Um, and that's it. That's that's your actually quick overview on how to draw the Christmas tree. I'm going to put one or two other movies on, say over the next week or so. Um, perhaps covering some of the other basics we did. Um, and if people are struggling, we might even see if we can show you how to do a bauble or a star or or um, a more basic sort of Christmas present box. Anyway, have a Merry Christmas and um, we'll see you soon. Cheers.